Hello, this is just going to be a little talk or whatever on my thoughts, experience of uh, ear training. Um, I had a comment on one of my videos that says that they're really appreciative. And um, they had mentioned that they don't really read printed music, but they, they learn by ear. Uh, so I want to try to give like uh, tidbits and things um, experience or whatnot if if it'll help them or anyone else um, so basically um, first I want to talk about that the schooling that we have at least in America I don't know what it is in other countries but um, we are not trained as like musicians or really we're not trained as anything um, in our early years um looking at looking at this from like musician point of view when i was in elementary school our music class was basically singing songs uh we didn't really i think there was a unit on like uh like instruments like the young person's guide to the orchestra or something like that but other than that um, I really don't remember much real music theory. We had a little bit of ear training, but it wasn't like, um, I'm trying to think. It wasn't all that intense. It was basically like three or four different intervals. And she, the teacher gave us songs that we could latch on to, to learn these intervals. Um, like oh christmas tree or something like that um and because you know this is like fourth fifth grade um you know, we have no clue what's going on <laughs> but um coming at this from an adult st uh you know with the knowledge that i do have uh <laughs> we really got gypped in our music education um also in art and all kinds of stuff we just we no, school is not taught the same way as it once was. Um, a lot of pitfalls there. So, uh, when I got into like, uh, junior high, we had a music course that we had to take. Um, and it basically covered basic, you know, music theory, uh, history, composition, and, uh, piano, basic piano skills. Um, which again, this is not like anything in depth. It's all just very over the top brushing across the surface. Um, and I remember I was in choir during these times. Like I, I was singing in like an elementary choir for a year. And then when I moved into junior high, I sung in the choirs there, uh, for those two years. And even into senior high, I still continued singing in choirs. Um, in addition, I was singing in, um, let's see, I think my soft, no, my senior year, I was singing in a, in a church choir. Um, but, well, yeah, e even a little bit before that, I was, I was singing in various choirs of, you know, church, whatever. Um, so I was getting a lot of choral, uh, music exposure in that sense. Uh, but again, even in like senior high, um, we didn't have a music theory class where we were learning actual ear training. Um, when I was in, um, uh, my senior year, I took, uh, an advanced music theory course, which was right up my alley. <laughs> I wish I could have took that course sooner, but, um, uh, this is at a, a in a different town. So, Yeah. So I took this music theory course and there we, we only had like, I don't know, an hour, maybe 50 minutes. I, I don't know. Actually, now that I'm thinking, I'm thinking they had black scheduling. So we may have had 90 minutes. Cause I remember we had, um, I, I, re I remember classes being longer than normal. Um, yeah, <laughs> I grew up in a really weird time where they were just 
doing a lot of experimenting. They took out junior high schools and they put in middle schools. Um, they took out the uh, eight eight period classes. I think they're like, you know, 45, 50 minute long classes. And they put in like these 90 block chunks. So like you'd have like, you know, one class would be 90 minute long. And then another class would be 90 minute. And then your lunch would be, you know, however long. And then you'd have like, uh, a smaller class period that would be like when your band and choir would would happen uh, and then you'd have your leftover uh, two classes in the afternoon each 90 minutes um, <clears throat> so yeah I, a lot of a lot of changes um, when I was in uh, school there <laughs> um, so uh, like all through like my uh, basic uh, growing up I did not have very much ear training, uh, really of much any, if any, um, very little. When I, uh, went to university, um, that was my first real exposure to ear training and sight singing. Um, now sight singing, I basically kind of like, I got by with like my choir music. I would really... I would listen to voices around me and I would basically be learning my music by sight or by, by hearing, by listening. I'd be listening to the piano accompaniment. I'd be listening to the other voices. Um, and that's how I, I would learn my, my part. And the music was basically there just to kind of help facilitate what I was hearing, um, with the sense of, you know, like a, an actual visual image of what I was hearing. So I didn't really depend on it a whole bunch. If anything, I used it to mark down when I was going to breathe and what I was going to listen for, things like that. Um, and I still do that. Um, <clears throat> so like, um, we, we, we didn't have a lot of ear training. Um, like I said, when I went to university, this was my first true real exposure to, uh, music ear training. And even then it wasn't really that good. <laughs> um, I mean, I know they got like, you know, their, their, their system and how they want classes set up and yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, that makes sense. Um, but you're basically being tested on things that could very easily be tested on, um, which are like, you know, the teacher would play a bunch of intervals. Is this a major second or a minor second? Is this a major third or a minor third? You know, easy things like that. Um, and then like she would play like a uh, melody and you had to write out the melody. She would play like a small harmonic uh, progression and you'd have to write out the, the parts for that. You have to write out the alto, soprano, tenor, and bass part. Um, and, you know, rhythm, she would play like a melody or she would clap a rhythm and you have to write out what the rhythm is. Um, and gradually as these courses improve, in, improved, in, increased in difficulty, if you didn't have the foundational skills down, you're going to slowly um, lose grip on what's going on because the the gaps that you have as an individual student are not being met. So, um, this is one of the reasons that I despise modern education because it doesn't take into the account of different learning styles and even learning speeds of people, um, like me. I mean, it takes me forever to learn something, but when I learn it really well, um, then it's, it's there. It, it's pretty much in, in my mind for, for, for a long time, um, so that's the thing that I really didn't like about uh, university is that as I was getting higher into the music ed education realm in that realm in university, um, it was like I was getting behind because there were gaps in my ear training and sight singing. Um, and sight singing, that's a whole nother um, animal <laughs> because like, 
if you can't see the music and you're not really dependent on the music, um, you're not, it, it's going to be really hard to, to pass the course if you can't, you know, if you physically cannot see the music. Um, so yeah. Uh, so one of the, one of the, uh, things that I learned, um, after I left university is, one, how important solfege really is. Uh, when I stumbled across the Braille music code and I was doing research into that, um, a lot of the uh, Braille music advocates, they would say, teach the the pitches using solfege because um, if you're not familiar with Braille, uh, there's only 64 three combinations of dots, 64 if you include the one with no dot, um, no dots at all. But there's 63 combinations, and these need to be used for letters, numbers, uh, music pitches, mathematic signs, indicators, you know, all sorts of stuff that need to be indicated for a blind person to read and write. Um, so, like, for instance, if you take the letter D, the the letter D in Braille, uh, that letter, those dots, they represent a pitch in the music, in, in music code. Um, so, you have to be able to switch between the two. Basically, like, when a sighted person is reading a book... They know they are reading a book, whether it be a novel, whatever. They know they're reading a book. When they switch to, um, like, the newspaper or, you know, something along along that lines, they, they're still reading letters and words, but they're reading it in a different context. They're reading it for, say, information on the weather or, you know, the stats of their favorite football team or whatever, you know, but they're still reading the same basic combinations of letters and uh, symbols. Um, and the same is true with uh, Braille. Um, the, the literacy Braille code, those symbols are used in a different context when it comes to music. So that's, um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's how that works. So when I was um, learning about uh, Braille and dabbling with that, um, and I learned that solfege is uh, what they primarily used for, you know, initial teaching of the pitches, um, that was like when I started to really started to take a closer look into all that, all those years that I'd been doing solfege in um, at university, the two and a half uh, well, yeah, two, two semesters of, uh, ear training and sight singing. And I still have all my, all my, my textbooks and things for that. So, um, easily that can be referenced to as, as I needed. Um, but, uh, when it comes to like ear training, um, uh, there is, uh, there's a, a YouTube, uh, person that does, transcription for, you know, that's his income. He transcribes music. He goes to concerts of like bands and I, you know, and he transcribes music that he hears. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. So in that sense, um, music, uh, music, uh, ear training is really important, but like, even if you're like learning, um, an, an instrument, uh, piano, singing, whatever, uh, cello, bass, um, ear training is still really important. Um, I had heard it once said that your playing is only as good as your ear can hear. Um, and that is in a sense true. Uh, <clears throat> one of my, uh, mentors said that, um, if you're, uh, playing piano, but you're not listening to what's coming out of it, um, you're not going to be able to adjust the quality and, you know, you're not going to be able to, um, you know, 
make for compensation if if you're not actively paying attention to what you're playing. Um, and, and these are things that, you know, I wasn't really taught how to do that stuff. I mean, I tried to apply the things, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't really taught how to um, actively listen. Um, and uh, this little thing here on ear training that I had found on this other uh, gentleman's channel, um, he, uh, he, uh, posted a video that said, basically, um, ear training is nothing more than listening to the pitches before you sing them. And most people would think, well, how the heck are you supposed to listen to pitches before you sing them? If, you know, you know, if you don't have a music instrument, a uh, piano or whatever, you know, at your disposal to play those pitches. Um, and here's the big secret. It's all in your mind's ear. <laughs> um, you have to basically hear the pitch in your mind's ear before you sing it or before you play it on your instrument. Like if you're a violinist um, and you're learning to play a, a G major scale or something like that, um, you're going to want to listen for what that what you want that scale to sound like and try to produce that on your instrument that's a um i was gonna say i don't know if that's too advanced for beginning violins or not because i don't play violin um but like being able to hear the music before you sing it or before you play it is basically what true ear training is um and so, um, I have, um, on my little doodad here, a, <laughs> a line of music, well, two lines, but we're only going to, we are only going to look at the one. Um, yeah, cause that, well, not that bass clef is any hard, but, um, I like the, <laughs> I like the bottom line better. <laughs> so, so, uh, we are going to look at this little musical example uh for those of you who are blind or visually impaired i'm extremely sorry i am this is just an image of uh from a from a music book that i have um and i will make it bigger so if you do have some site hopefully that will help um but for uh blind people it's it's a single i'm just describing this for them uh if they have concept of braille music it's a single line of music in the treble clef um and it's it's got f six flats it's in the uh four four time signature and it has uh two three four it's six measures long no s five measures i can't tell if that's a bar line I think it's six measures long and it has a first and a second ending. So that's basically the, the layout of the music for, uh, my blind friends. Um, so looking at this, um, I was saying that, uh, true ear training is when you listen to pitches in your mind's ear before you sing them. So, uh, we're going to look at 130 no 173 um uh from this uh book that i that i have in my library um so here um first i would say to anyone who's learning to read music learn your key signatures like learn them before you start learning anything else cuz i mean like it might seem like upside down and backwards but if you at least understand what a key signature is, it will save you a whole lot of headache later on down the road. You will be able to pick up music and instantly know, oh, that's in the key of A, that's in the key of G, that's in the key of G flat major, or this is in the key of E flat minor. You know, you could look at those and not be daunted about, oh, what does all those flats and sharps mean? Um, so learn at least like get a chart. Like, I mean, there's hundreds of charts on the internet and I'm not, 
I, I, I actually would like to post a video on how this works. But when I was learning key signatures, I was just looking at a chart. It had the key signature. It had the major and the minor key below it. And, you know, it just had the sharps and the flats, you know, laid out like that. And the, you know, the C major and A minor, obviously, up at the top. So it had this chart. And I'm studying this chart. I'm thinking, now, what makes this group of keys, what makes this group of sharps A major? What makes this group of flats um, A flat minor or, you know, something like that? Um, and gradually, you know, I'm looking through this and it clicked. Um, and from then on, I was able to look at any piece of music and instantly identify the key signature. Now in Braille, it's going to be drastically different because they don't list out all the, the pitches of the sharps and flats. So if I were to learn this in Braille, I would need to know that G flat major is six flats. Because in Braille, they just write out six flats. And you have to know that six flats is G flat major or E flat minor. Um, that's just something you have to know from uh, a Braille perspective. So um, uh, learning to read music in Braille is a little bit different. Because you have to know some theory before you can actually apply some of the Braille stuff. Um and, you know, we can talk about that in, in uh, future videos. So basically singing, uh, singing music, being able to hear pitches before you sing them. So I'm just going to randomly pick out a note. I don't have a pitch pipe or anything near me. So we're just going to randomly pick out a note. Um, and uh, we are going to say that um, this particular note is going to be the pitch do so do let's do this pitch as do so this is our do now looking at the music um do is going to be the second line above uh from the bass or from the from the bottom of the staff it's going to be that g flat so if we look at the first pitch we see that our first notes are not on do but they're on a completely different pitch um one we have to know which pitch that is um and this would be uh you know basic music being able to know that this is um me um and being able to recognize these um Heads up, this is going to be in movable dough. This is not going to be in fixed dough. Um, I'm not real familiar. I'm, I shouldn't say I'm not real familiar. I'm not as uh, comfortable with singing uh, using fixed dough because I don't have a lot of practice with it. But uh, this can definitely be done using fixed dough using um, instead of uh, instead of the first pitch being dough. Or the, you know, this opening key being Do or E flat, G flat major. It would be, um, say, major. Um, and that's Sol. If you flat, it's going to be pronounced Say. And then uh, the E flat minor is going to be pronounced May minor. Um, so anytime you flat a solfege, it's going to say a it's going to have it's 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 going to have that symbol or that syllable um re is the only weird one because it already has an a sound so it's pronounced ra um so little tidbit there so this would be in se major um so going up from like if we did um Sele me, uh, not not me. Uh, sele te. That would be how you would, um, you know, that's that's how that would work. Sele te, me te, or le te se. Um, yeah, it it it's it's kind of 
I say it's not hard, but it's it's a lot of work because I've, I'm I don't do it every day. So um, that's a skill I need to work on. So this is gonna we're just gonna do this in uh, standard movable dough. So this G flat we're gonna call that dough, and the first pitch we're gonna sing is me, but we have to find where me is. Um, if we have do, if this is our do, um, are we going to be able to find me? Um, I'm going to see if you guys can find that on your own. Do, me, and a way you can check that, do, re, me. Now, if you had to climb up using the steps, that's okay. Um, but eventually, the whole point of hearing the pitch before you sing it, um, this is the the part of the ear training aspect. So being able to sing, do, mi, and then if you want to sing, re, being able to sing those, do, mi, re, do, um, that will help with, you know, just singing just those first opening pitches or the first couple steps of the scale, playing around with those and being able to, you know, give yourself a do, do. Now, can I sing re, re? Can I sing do, mi, do, mi? As a little sharp, do, mi, um, do, re, mi, um. So, yeah, being able to hear the pitches um, and then sing them without using an instrument, this is true ear training. So, we're going to go through this little exercise here. Um, so, we, we've we already established uh, me. We've already know where our opening pitch is. And we've already been playing around with Ray, so we should be able to sing the first opening uh, measure. Um, I was going to say we could talk about rhythm, but we could talk about rhythm later. But um, it's in four, so if you want to keep a, a time, one, two, three, four. Me, me, re, me. And that's that's the first opening measure. Now the next note if you see it does jump down to do so if we have me can we sing the the do do and if you are able to do that without going me re do um that is really really good um me do uh being able to sing do me do is really important and once you get really good at those pitches you can add um mi fa mi re mi fa so mi do and then you can play with all those pitches do mi so mi do re fa mi fa so do uh being able to do those um will help with at least establishing um you know singing pitches by by ear without um having to use an instrument so we have um me do uh we need to scroll over to see what the rest of the measure says so we have uh looking at measure 2 we have do do then we have to stop and find what that next pitch is which is me and we've been singing it for a while me and the next pitch is going to be a half step so that's going to be me fa me fa so that's how that works um the pitches between re, uh me and soul oh, sorry me and fa that's going to be a little bit smaller than the other pitches and the other pitch uh t and do 
it's going to be the same distance. It's going to be on the smaller side. Um, and this is what makes a major scale um, major is where the placement of these half steps and whole steps are. Uh, so being able to recognize um, me for me, being able to um, sing that and um, recognizing it will help with um, music reading and ear training as well. Um, now there, I was going to say, uh, when I uh, was singing, I don't know if I do it much anymore, but when I was singing in uh, Madison at a church, I was always told that I, I sharped. I, I could like sharp by like a quarter tone. Um, so sometimes if, if I'm not careful, I could go, I could be singing me for, um, which is a wrong pitch because it's right between me for me, um, versus the little tiniest of, uh, steps me for it's, just a little off. Um, yeah, uh, some people can sing in between the cracks like that. Some people it's, it's, yeah, I wasn't taught how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how it is. I think I'm so nervous about, um, you know, singing wrong pitches or something. I just am careful and I'm a little bit careful on the sharp side. So, um, so looking at measure two, we have do, do, mi, fa. And the next pitch we can clearly see is sol, mi, fa, sol. Does that sound familiar? Dee, 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 dee. Dee, 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 dee. That's another very common musical um, s little sentence you want to learn how to sing. Um, so, um, so we got me, fa, so, so, and then we got a scroll. Uh oh, we have some steps. We have so, so, and then we have, we go back down to the me, and then the last pitch in this measure is going to be a do. So we have to think if we're on so, how are we going to find me? We have to soul and then listen for where that me is. Me, soul, me. And again, to check it, you could go soul, fa, me, and you will land there. If you had sung like soul, me, and if you tried singing, so for me, you know, you could tell, okay, well, I was, I was really flat. Um, so that's a way of checking if you sing a pitch and you don't know if it's correct, you think it is, but you want to make sure, or if you know that it's wrong, you could go back and sing the, the intermediate steps in between. So for me, so me. So that's, um, that's how that would work. And then if we want to sing from me and we need to find our do, we have to sing me and then we listen for where do is. Do, me, do. So this whole measure, so, so, me, do. And then the next pitch goes up to um, re, so singing do, re, being able to sing do, re is, uh, another really, um, a good one. You're going to want to know how to sing do, re, mi, re, do, being able to sing those three steps, being able to sing do, re, mi, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do, being able to sing those, um, so me do re, uh, being able to sing those are going to help with, um, you know, recognizing music when you're listening to it. Um, so then you have 
um, a little squiggly at the end of the bar, which means that this is a rest. So we don't sing. Um, now we have to, uh, the very end, it looks like there's two dots with a couple, there's a thin line and then a thick line. That means to go back and repeat the, everything that you've done up to where it says this number one. The number one with that long vertical line, that means that this is a first ending. Um, and what we want to do when we, after we get done with the bar line, the repeat, we go back to the beginning. When we get to the number one, we're going to skip the two bars that are underneath the number one, and we're going to jump to the number two. This is called your second ending. And you can see that it takes us to the end of this little exercise. So um, coming back, uh, going back to this first ending, we're going to start on um, so, so, and we're going to listen for me, Ray, or me, do, and then go up to Ray. And then we're going to go back and see where our next pitch is going to be. So, so, mi, do, re. Then you rest. And we look back at the beginning of the measure, or the beginning of the exercise, and we go, oh, this is on me. This is a step up from where I just was. Re, mi. And what you could do as, um, you know, a little tip if, if you want to do this, um, is you could take, since you know you're going to repeat, you could take this pitch and literally just draw it right in the staff. And this way, you know where your next pitch is going to be. And you could easily see that you're going to sing do, re, mi. Those are the pitches, maybe not in that rhythm but that's what those are the pitches you're singing being able to see that pitch early is going to help with knowing what sound you need to hear next so if we have uh so so <clears throat> so so mi do re and then i gotta find the beginning of this line mi mi re mi do, do, um, and then it continues, and then we, we're on do, 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 then we have to find me again, mi, fa, mi, fa, um, and then, now that we're at this bar line, the, the number one, we have to skip it, mi, fa, and then we sing up from fa to so, and then we jump down to me, re, re, do. That was completely out of rhythm, but yeah. So if we did from this second ending, if we did um, me, me, re, me, do, do, you should be able to start to recognize where me do and then going back up to me fa and then so me re re do um that's kind of how it's done i wish i could like take you inside my brain and let you actually hear what i'm hearing <laughs> um but yeah um and if you wanted to do this like as like a full um exercise um I'll run through this uh and see uh see if it helps as far as you know just understanding un understanding how pitches are heard and things like that so we we have do this is going to be our do and then I need to find me and uh, another thing is keeping a tempo. You want to try to keep your tempo really steady. Um, otherwise, 
if your tempo is wrong, uh, your pitch is going to get wrong. Your rhythm is going to get wrong. Um, everything is just going to fall apart. So having a steady tempo, um, you could tap your hand or, uh, conduct if you know the conducting patterns. Um, so if this is in four, I'm going to conduct with my finger. <laughs> so we got one, two, three, four. Mi, mi, re, mi, do, do. Mi, fa, so, so. Mi, do, re. Mi, mi, re, mi, do, do. Mi, fa, so, mi, re, re, do. And that's how that works. Now, this is really fast. So being able to recognize these are not going to happen up front, but going through it and looking at some of this stuff um, will will help. And you can find all kinds of music reading to practice on the Internet. Um, I'm looking at the top one. We could look at the top one um, and see how that one looks. We're not going to go through. Uh, let me see. Let's see. So the top one is 172. And we're in the bass clef. If you are a bass player, um, this would be the clef that you would read from. So this is in, I'm just looking at this. This looks like it's in the key of G or D major. And again, we're going to just use um, like standard uh, notation, uh, standard uh, movable do. So this is uh, do, mi. So, so that's me finding my opening pitches. Um, so this looks like it's in two. So we got, um, one, two, one, two. Um, again, I'm thinking on so fish. One, two, one. So me, 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 do, do, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so. So mi 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 do do mi uh re mi do re <laughs> this is tricky um re mi where did I leave off on um I gotta look for a a a a, a thing a thing um da 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 di da da I don't know where I left off on I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the line because I totally um. This is why it's really important to look at the music before you sing it <laughs> to know what's coming up. So, one, two, one, two. So, mi, 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 do, do, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, so, mi, mi. Oh, shoot, I screwed up on counting. I held that so just a little bit too long. Um, fa, fa, so, so, mi, mi. Mi do do, re do mi mi do, <laughs> re do mi mi do. So yeah, being able to um do things like that, uh, this is relatively easy. Um, this is taken from a uh, it's a elementary music um sight singing book. So it's something that might be a little bit too easy for university, but if you could like find stuff on the internet um and like look at the pitches and like try not to sing them all at once but try to look at like steps and say okay well if this is do and where i'm starting on soul can i find soul from do and you can either do the little steps going up do re mi fa sol or else you could do do mi sol um or else you could do do sol if you are uh, a little bit more uh, competent and as you practice this stuff it will get better it's really hard at first but it will get better um so all the best um i hope this helps <laughs> if it doesn't i'm completely sorry i just wasted a whole bunch of your time <laughs> but yeah um so that's my little um talking on ear training and how how to apply it how to practice it um like i said there's a bunch of stuff on the internet you could buy books um like sight reading books and just practice 
um, reading through them with, you know, once you get better with like singing steps, then you want to gradually move into singing uh, the skips and being able to hear the pitches before you sing them. Uh, that's the important part is to hear the pitches before you sing them. Um, and then, of course, checking them like with the skips, you could sing up or down the, the, the scale. Um, so and I can I mean, I could put up like um, like music exercises, like if I uh, played or if I gave you a pitch and I says, OK, I want you to sing Ray from Do or something like that. You know, I could I could post something like that. Uh, a bunch of exercises if if people um, might think that would help if not I still might do it because you never know who's looking for for something like that so all right well I hope this does well it does does you well and I'll chat with you next time